Well, Welcome back. We continue our President's Day look at FDR with another New Deal era reform that echoes today, banking and bank regulation. And once again, President Roosevelt threw a wide net over the issue, employing a slew of new laws and regulations, among them the Glass-Steagall Act, which effectively put a wall between commercial banks and Wall Street. Also, FDR created the FDIC, the entity that protects your savings, even if your bank fails, plus the other programs and laws listed here, among others. Roosevelt explained his actions and his approach to the American people. Practices of the unscrupulous money changers stand indicted in the court of public opinion, rejected by the hearts and minds of men. And there must be an end to a conduct in banking and in business, which too often has given to a sacred trust the likeness of callous and selfish wrongdoing. Small wonder that confidence languishes for it thrives only on honesty, on honor, on the sacredness of obligations, on faithful protection, and on unselfish performance. Without them, it cannot live. Restoration calls, however, not for changes in ethics alone. This nation is asking for action, and action now. And the nation certainly got plenty of action. The result of FDR's Wall Street rules and regulations, well, decades of prosperity, you could argue, and economic safety. Bank failures are shown in this graph, particularly practically non-existent from the New Deal until portions of the New Deal were repealed in the 1980s and 90s. And as incomes grew in those years, they grew for everyone. This other chart that we've shown you many times on RFL shows the gains of the top 1% versus the gains for all, a gap that really only emerged after many of those New Deal reforms were repealed, which again brings us to today. Many people once again blaming misconduct in Wall Street for the nation's economic woes, but unlike during FDR's days, efforts to rein in those banks and bankers has not been all that successful, though not for the attempts of President Obama. We have to enact common sense reforms that will protect American taxpayers and the American economy from future crises as well. For while the financial system is far stronger today than it was one year ago, it's still operating under the same rules that led to its near collapse. Think of how many times we've heard similar language from President Obama, but his attempts to regulate Wall Street have been met with a hailstorm of opposition, particularly from the Republican Party. Then they passed Dodd-Frank. It's just killing the, the, the residential uh, uh, home market, and it's, it's got to be replaced. And if you want to put people in jail, I want to second what Michelle said. You ought to start with Barney Frank and Chris Dodd, and let's look at the politicians who created the environment, the politicians who profited from the environment, and the politicians who put this country in trouble. Well, first of all, I, I want to start with the modern comparison on this one because it's, it's so in our faces in this election season. I, is there more sympathy for Wall Street today than there was in the days after the Great Depression? It seemed like Roosevelt had a lot more anger at, at Wall Street and bankers than there, we seem to have maintained following the 2008 collapse. Well, in the year leading up to his election, 1932, Congress actually did set up a commission called the Pecora Commission to look into the collapse of Wall Street, what actually happened. And in the course of that, uh, those hearings, uh, you know, things came out like the fact that the head of Citibank paid no taxes, that uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, paid no taxes, that uh, they had bundled bad loans and sold them to Latin American countries, that they had provided infantry loans to buy stock to each other. I mean, it was uh, just a, a, a damning condemnation of Wall Street. So in that kind of environment, right, leading into his inauguration, uh, there was a tremendous public outcry and tremendous public desire for some reform. They wanted reform on Wall Street. So, Nick, we, di we didn't hear that we were, uh, we were harming the job creators by restricting Wall Street? Well, no. Um, but fast forward to today, the best thing that could be done to, um, is, is the re-implementation of the Glass-Steagall Act, which uh, Bill Clinton signed the repeal of it after it was, um, the, 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 the right sought this for you know, years and years. And again, that's the that's the law that stopped com uh, commercial banks, that your savings and loans from commercial from investment exactly. banks, and prevented banks from um, making risky investments using other people's money. And as we showed before, we've seen a, since that repeal, we've seen an enormous increase in bank failures, uh, which also happened before the the Glass Steagall was put in place. It's again, it was slow, steady, safe growth in the period. Uh, from the New Deal till about 1980. We've seen a little more boom and bust since then, correct? Yeah, and, and in that clip you heard the, uh, I think it was Mitt Romney who said this is not the way to fix the housing crisis. Well, again, uh, when Roosevelt took office, uh, the typical 
house loan was five to seven years of so the balloon payment at end. Uh, the housing market had collapsed. A thousand homes a day were being foreclosed. B roughly 50% of all the homes, urban mortgages in the United States were uh, in default or delinquent when he took office. He set up the Homeowners Loan Corporation, which uh, was a federal agency that refinanced homes directly. Within a couple of years, they refinanced 20% of all the homes in the United States and saved the housing market, and it made a profit by the time it closed its books. And we've heard so many arguments for that in, in today's era. I just, as we're wrapping up, uh, we've got about 30 seconds. It's so many times, so many examples, and we could pick so many more where it seems like the legacy and the lessons of FDR are either being ignored or, or it, what, what is your sense of that? I mean, could everybody stand a visit to Hyde Park? Is that... Uh... <laughs> People forget history. Um, you learn it and you forget it. Um, I think the biggest example, the best example, is that government does have a role to p play in people's lives, a positive role. FDR proved that, and um, that continues today. I would say that Roosevelt built the house we live in, and for decades we were comfortable in that house. We remodeled the furniture, we had debates about balance and things like that, how much federal intervention, how much not. Uh, but now what we're in seeing is people are trying to tear down the house. I, I can't uh, put it any better than that. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.